Hello, I'm with Vijay Samamurthy. Thank you so much uh, for being here. The founder and managing partner of Lexigen. Uh, Vijay, welcome to the 16th Horasis uh, India Meet over here in Athens. Thanks very much. It's my pleasure to be here, Absolutely. as always. Absolutely. Have you had a good time in the last uh, few days? Yes, absolutely. Um, and, you know, as I mentioned several times, uh, this is probably the ninth or tenth time that I'm at a Horasis event. Right. So I have a, uh, I'm not a newcomer to Horasis yes. and for good reason. Fantastic, yeah. fantastic. And tell me a little bit about what were some of your key takeaways for over, over the last few days? I think uh, what has really struck me, I mean, obviously I came here, I usually go to the Horasis India meetings to talk about the India opportunity. That has not changed. Mm -hmm. I'm one of the passionate uh, uh, campaigners for the India Opportunity, and I always say that you know wherever I go, including mm. at the Harasses India meetings, right. I always talk about promoting India in a big way <laughs> because I do think that mm. it's a huge opportunity. Uh, but the added thing that I have learned and uh, you know become much more uh, tuned on to is the synergies between the Greek market and the Indian market as well. Right. Uh, obviously, you know, historically there have been cultural and, you know, uh, culinary maybe uh, synergies that you know, some people have talked about in the past couple of days. Of course. But um, I do think now, after spending the past few days here mm. and listening to the various people that I've talked to from all the ecosystems, including from Greece, yes. I'm quite convinced that there is a, a there synergy synergies. possible between the Indian market and Greece. Uh, and there have been some prime ministerial visits that have happened in recent times. Of All of these are adding to the... Uh, Culminating yeah. towards a, a brighter, broader uh, future and partnership. Absolutely. And yes. I have no doubt that, uh, you know, that opportunity can be deepened quite a bit. Fantastic. And firms like ours, uh, you know... Yes, you know, tell me a little bit more about Lexigen, you know. What are some of the... Th those are personal key takeaways. What about for Lexigen mm -hmm. in particular? How has the last few days shaped perhaps the vision or your thought about Lexigen of the future? Absolutely. So, I, you know, I like to describe Lexigen as uh, a firm with very proud Indian roots. Mm. Uh, you know, the firm was founded by me 18 years ago in 2006. Right. So it's a, it's a firm with proud Indian roots, which continues to have, uh, uh, you know, very strong, but with a very global outlook and mm. feel. So, um, so therefore, I'm based in Singapore, where I relocated three years ago. Right. And the primary reason for my relocating was that India is now kind of running on autopilot for Lexigen, <laughs> though I do keep going there every month. Fantastic. Congratulations. But, thank you. But uh, the opportunity for India and for the you know, Indian businesses to globalize is what has driven uh, you know, Lexigen moving to Singapore, not moving to Singapore, expanding into Singapore. Yes. Uh, to the broader Asia Pac region, yeah. because uh, uh, you know I have been equally a fan of Singapore market for a long time, and you know we've, uh, as a firm, done a lot of work for Singaporean clients, very reputable names like Changi Airports, for example. We've Fantastic. done a lot of work for them. Right. So Singapore as a market has been very important for us because you know there's been a lot of synergy between India and Singapore. Yeah. You know what uh, often gets referred to as the trade corridor between uh, an investment corridor between India and Singapore. Mm -hmm. And and therefore we as a firm have always focused uh, while India remains our origin mm -hmm. and our roots uh, and continues to be the lifeblood of the firm's of practice uh, the firm's DNA has always been uh, a global and international one. Yeah. We have always sought to uh, work on the more complex transactions. Transactions, yes. Uh, which is not to say we don't do run of the mill deals. We yeah. do when you know for a for it's like a bread and butter kind of so thing. So when should so when should a, a company think about you know you were mentioning about the the investment corridor uh, between uh, India and Singapore. When would be a right time for a company? to uh, pick up the phone and call Lexigen? Let me answer it in a simple sentence. Fantastic. It's never too late, it's never too early. Wonderful, so, oh, I love that. <laughs> because, you know, there, there are people who ask me, these founders of uh, companies ask yes. me these questions. If they are startup founders, mm. uh, they say, you know, it's too early for me to think about yeah. globalization. And I say, no, you got to think about it from day one. Because if you think about it like a global company from day one, Mm -hmm. Your chances of building a truly global company yeah. are high. Yes. Similarly, 
uh, I meet companies that have been around for 25, 30 years and they mm. say, maybe it's too late for us to expand. And I say the same thing to them, it's never too late to expand. Mm. You should do it whenever you're ready. Yes. Right? So, and, and there's never an optimal time to, obviously if you can do it when in the early days, it's always a little more optimal. Yeah. But not everybody has that luxury. Yeah. So you got to do it at the time when it's right. But we would certainly say that every company should, uh, and it's not about, uh, you it know, should being be top a of mind, basically. Yes. You know, you got to deliver. And many companies have this concern that they will be perceived as not being true to their own country and stuff mm. like that. But I think that in a globalized world, you can be a proud Indian origin company and yeah. delivering global value. And today Fantastic. there are a lot of companies like that doing it. Fantastic. Another question then, Vijay, because, you know, it, there's so much change that has happened, you know, mm -hmm. whether it comes to, for example, IP, when we talk about AI, True. right? How do law firms such as yours, how do you like how do you guys keep up with it? Because the regulators and everyone is, you know, there's, there's so much new yeah. uh, that is happening. So how do you keep up so with it? I think, I mean, I don't want to speak about other people, but I'll speak about Lexigen. Yes. Uh, as a firm, we've always had this culture mm. of being nimble yes. and agile. So anything that's a changing trend, uh, it's, it's fair to say we are one of the early firms to have experimented with it. We may not always follow through with it because for our reasons we may have decided not to go through. But uh, we usually um, are one of the few firms, I won't say we uh, are the first, that would be a very but you tall are thing. But it's, we, it's, yeah. it's a part of your culture. It's a part of our culture to say right. if there's something new, okay. If they say there's AI that's going to shape up things in a different way, uh, you know, the law, I have actually sat in on many discussions mm -hmm. uh, where people have, you know, talked about whether AI is going to reshape the legal services industry. Yes. And, and the short answer is yes. Yes. The long answer is uh, going to take a long time to give, but uh, we have explored that, uh, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, fair to say that we explore questions like that fairly early on. And we have been uh, adopters of the AI revolution uh, in our own way. Sure. Uh, for the past five, six years now. And in fact, uh, it's very interesting. Today, everybody's talking about AI in such a big way. Mm. Back in 2018, as mm. far back as 2018, mm. we were one of the first law firms to host a conference in India yeah. where we posed this question to law firms from about 60 countries. About where, AI? About AI, where we wow. invited speakers from LexisNexis. Yeah. We had speakers from some very dynamic uh, legal tech startups which were very very new back then Wonderful. and they were all figuring out what AI was and we had a conference so that's the kind of DNA we that have. Is, no, that is absolutely incredible and one final question uh, for you Vijay uh, as we wrap it up any advice for you know I'm sure you're always on the lookout for good talent uh, at Lexigen any advice for uh, for future lawyers or, or uh, you know who might who might be considering uh, either have considered or are considering uh, law as a path what are some of the things that they should consider as they uh, think about becoming a lawyer of tomorrow okay that's a great question and a very fair one and my simple answer is uh, listen to your heart mm. uh, and to your mind but you need to be able to honestly say that uh, obviously you cannot do that without uh, trying it out for a bit. But uh, I always say that just because you went to law school hmm. doesn't mean you have to remain a lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> I know some very exciting, very interesting people who, who went to law school, did pretty well there, and who figured they were not really enjoying it. Right. And there are people like me, I can say with all honesty that I really enjoy being a lawyer. Fantastic. But I equally enjoy being a legal entrepreneur. Because right. I've, I've been a legal entrepreneur for 18 years now. And apart from the thrill of working on deals where we are advising clients on very complex problems to find solutions. But equally, I'm, I'm fighting with those issues every day as the founder of a law firm. Fantastic. So I would highly encourage people to enter this profession. It's very exciting. Yeah. But it's not for you. I mean, don't just get into it for reasons like there's good money because yeah. there are, there's good money in a in thousand a different places. businesses. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so you got to follow your heart, be passionate about it, enjoy. I mean, try it out because you'll never find out if you enjoy it or not. I personally, when I went to law school, I wanted to be a litigator. Mm -hmm. That is what I wanted to do. Yeah. But when I did my few internships in litigation, I felt that this is not for me. Yeah. So I ended up becoming a corporate lawyer, and I've stayed that for 27 years. 
And no Wonderful. regrets. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. So I hope the lawyers of tomorrow, you're listening to that. Follow your heart. Thank you very, very much, Vijay. It was an absolute pleasure. It's my pleasure being here. And thank you again for uh, interviewing me on the sidelines of Horasis, an event that I've consistently enjoyed contributing to and learning from. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks very much for having thank me. Thank you. Here.